Hello everyone, it's Takuya here, and welcome back to another Hearts of Iron 4 video. And yes, I know I sound off. I am a bit sick. So I figure then today that if I'm going to be sick, why not be the sick man of South America, the last nation that we have yet to play? A truly great and powerful and amazing nation not listed in this list of interesting countries. No, Bolivia, the true supreme state of south America. okay no no i can't even i can't keep this up guys i'm gonna be straight with you here for a second among all the varying nations that have been given uh interesting focus trees or national ideas or anything in south america with the latest dlc the one that probably was screwed the most was bolivia because it gets all the negative effects of national spirits while simultaneously not actually being given a focus tree yeah that was a misunderstanding on my part i thought that bolivia when i was first looking into this would actually have a focus tree something that was maybe you know smaller than the others like like Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, but perhaps it was reduced to show its more minor role, but no, no, it got nothing. It got nothing except miserable Chaka War and also the era of national regression, as well as a few negative events. Bolivia got boned in the DLC. I just realized at this moment no one could see what I was talking about because I had the wrong display set up. Yeah, yeah, they, um, they're, they're, they're not exactly in a good situation. For anyone who's familiar with the history of Bolivia, it was at one point a fairly decently powerful state, but due to a series of conflicts with its neighbors from Peru to Chile to, well, pretty much everyone around it, it lost a lot of its territory. Its access to the sea was taken to, from it from Chile. Uh, it lost the Chaco territory to Paraguay. It lost this territory territory up here to Brazil, it just, I, I, honestly, it's just, it's not a good situation. But can we turn it around? No, no, not really. Well, let's try our best, damn it. Starting from the very beginning here in 1936, we have a very small industry, only six civvy factories. We simultaneously have two research slots and a single mill. Combine that with the, combine that with the fact that we already have extremely bad negative effects that reduce our stability, political power gain, attackability, literally everything about us, and some of these things, like in the case of the Tulta Chaco War, because we have no focus tree, you cannot get rid of until literally no the 1st of November 1939. The other thing, the era of national regression, which reduces our political power gain, our stability, our war sport, and everything, can only be removed if you establish Greater Bolivia, which we cannot do because we are freaking democratic. Ugh. That means no justifying on our on our neighbors. No, we can't. We, we literally cannot do that. Truly, the only good thing that Bolivia has going for it is that it has a very large amount of tungsten, which, I mean, you know, okay, that's something. And then simultaneously, it does have some interesting national decisions that you can take. So if you take the territory around it from Acker, from... Uh, Arica from Littoral, then you can go and reincorporate these states and, you know, actually get them back as core, so that's nice. And also, political action-wise, you have... And then political action-wise, there's some very interesting things, such as embrace plurinationalism, in which as a democratic nation, if you control territory around you, you still get bonuses, like non-core manpower plus 25%, that is massive. And more importantly than any of that is that you still have the Peru-Bolivian Confederation, in which at one point in time, Bolivia and Peru were combined into one nation. If you actually play Victoria 3, this is what is happening at the beginning of the game, that from 1836 to 1839, you have this this confederation that is actually quite large and is predicted to be a very powerful state that doesn't actually last. So what can we do? Well, really nothing for the longest time. Starting from the very beginning, all that we're really going to be able to do is build ourselves up a little bit of infrastructure and simultaneously, well, we can't actually build any factories whatsoever. So literally at this point, it is just infrastructure. That's all that we can do. Focus tree wise, we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of research going and also stuff for industry because again, we can't really do much else. We're going to take all of our units, slap that into an army and after that we literally just have the basic generic focus tree there's nothing the fact that bolivia doesn't get the military focus tree that all the other latin american countries or south american countries down here got is really a travesty because if anything needs it it's probably bolivia to that end the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get political effort to get ourselves some political power going and past that well we just got to hope for the best with political effort done we can't really do anything because even now i'm still not generating much political power so we're going to go down industrial effort and try to help our economy. As you can see, I'm barely getting anything because our country doesn't want to function. Now here's the interesting first event that we have, Dia del Mar celebrations. As per tradition, since the loss of the littoral department to Chile in the War of the Pacific in the late 1800s, the annual Dia del Mar celebrations are being held today to remember the Bolivian heroes who once 
fought against Chile. Many see this as an opportunity to reiterate our claims to for access to the Pacific Ocean that was lost when we became landlocked following the war. Should we let the people protest? Well, we can let them do what they want and get ourselves some political power, say that they're onto something, which is actually going to give us a claim on this territory, but we can't really do anything with that, and it's just it's going to boost fascism and nothing really else. But it's also going to hurt our stability. So honestly, right now, there's nothing that we could do. Just let the people do what they want, and from that, you know, we'll get a little bit of political power and then use that and as an opportunity to get ourselves a traditional theorist just so I can get some more political power going because I'm really going to need that. The one real benefit that Bolivia gets that I've noticed that is quite powerful is that it actually has some very powerful advisors. So like in the case of educational reformer plus 15% research speed, that is massive. Non-core manpower plus 20% for its judge and newspaper editor, that is huge. So if we combine that plus the plurinationalism thing, that is plus 45% non-core manpower power. Again, massive. And also its foreign minister gets plus 20% to resources, which is again, huge. Holy crap, that is huge combined with all the other effects that you get. In our case, because I only have two research slots, I want to research things as fast as possible. So I'm going to go with a research speed guy. And here is the next part. Okay, so German Bush moves to overthrow the government. Following the largest strike movement known until now in the country, the military under the young lieutenant colonel, German Bush has moved to overthrow the government of Tejada. They claim that unlike Tejada, they stand on the side of the Bolivian people and the socialist idea deals of the United Socialist Party and the trade unions. Can something be done to stop them, or is it already too late considering the Chaco War catastrophe? Well, we could completely destroy our country by putting down the rebellion, which you can see already what that's gonna do, or no, we're just gonna, we're just gonna let it happen. And with that, we get to the Bolivarian Socialist Revolution. David Toro Rulova is now the guy in charge, which is gonna generate us some army experience, as well as give us some defense in our core territory, and that switches things over to the Gobierno Militar Socialista. So that's fascinating. Let's see, with construction effort two done, I am still building up my territory here with infrastructure. And if we go down and look at our infrastructure bonus, so this is the thing that happens with the generic focus tree. We've all seen this. With infrastructure effort, we would actually build up the infrastructure in these two territories, which ultimately we don't really need here. If I go and finish this stuff off, then that means I'm only going to have to research one of the infrastructure focuses, which in turn means I'm going to save 70 days. So in the meantime, what we're going to do instead is do some armament efforts just to save us some time. And with two military factories constructed and our infrastructure mostly complete down here, that means I just have the one that is being built. And on top of that, infrastructure efforts, perfect. That's going to give me three. With this one, I should be able to bypass the next one and save me 70 days. And immediately after that, I can focus on building a military factory to get myself uh, some more equipment. Oh, I forgot. I had 150 political power. Next step, uh, judge and newspaper editor. More stability, political power, and the non core manpower is going to be pretty nice. Now, the interesting thing to note here, or rather, their lack of interesting things to note is that past this point I have not found any other events or anything that we actually get at least maybe I'm missing all that but besides being able to go and have my leader resign to get my general in charge who is actually a really good leader because he has the military socialist effect plus the general president effect which is all awesome Bolivia gets nothing like it actually got screwed in this so now we're just going to go ahead and bypass infrastructure effort two and immediately after that move on to extra research slot get that done and with our remaining political power here, get our army reformer, so we can start generating some XP. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I'm going to be stuck here on civilian economy for a while, and that just means I will have no bonuses to the construction of my military factories. I can't do anything. And then once I get this military factory built, there's really nothing for me to do. Like, I, the, the, Bolivia has no space for anything, amazingly enough. So I might as well start constructing supply hubs in random points around the country, just so that I will have further supply for my expansion efforts later. And also, focus-wise, since I can't do anything else here and I have no population whatsoever to actually be able to use for my military efforts, that means we are going to have to go down collectivist, east, coll 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 collectivist ethos, that thing. And then from there, beeline our way down to militarism so that we can actually get 5% recruitable population, which on the base for the focus tree, like for a generic focus tree, this is like one of the best benefits you could possibly have. July 1938, there's literally nothing for us to do except now finally start focusing on our army effort to just build up our military as much as we can. Slowly, steadily, we're going to be building manpower and to that end let's just start spamming out some units because we're going to need a lot of those in fact let's see i got five guys here let's go ahead and get 17 divisions cranked out that sounds nice the other thing that i'm going to need to make sure that i do is that everywhere that we're going to be fighting is going to have lots of mountains so unlike other kind of previous playthroughs where i've been able to overwhelm things through just sheer other bullshit i actually do have to be smart about what i'm doing because bolivia is absolutely screwed so mountaineers are necessary brazilian good neighbor policy okay 
Uh, yeah, yeah, see, literally nothing has happened going into 1939, and we're not going to get anything else. That's it. And with the world heating up, maybe the toll of the Chaco War should finally be disappearing here in November. Three years of literally nothing. Almost four years of almost literally nothing happening. I love it. Well, look, David obviously can't handle what's going on in the world as everything falls around us, so that means you need to go and resign. And that gives us German Bush Becerra in charge. Very nice stuff. Very, very good stuff. And by timing everything right here for equipment number three, which is going to give me one two-year ahead-of-time penalty for infantry weapons and whatnot, I'm going to be able to go over here and research-wise, we're getting improved infantry equipment for 1940 now, meaning I can get 1942 guns very, very quickly, which I'm going to need because I'm going to need every advantage I can get here at this point because I still have no population. And what we're going to need is a special kind of unit that can actually fight against everything, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Mountaineer Division, ho! Because you, I finally have enough for some infantry divisions to spawn out, so we're going to go ahead and create all those, slap all of you all into an army, and let's see, what do we got? Servino Zapata, you have Hill Fighter, that is actually pretty nice, even though it's only going to affect hills. But our Field Marshal does have Mountaineer as a trait, which is very good. Ooh, Gualberto Varel, you also have Ranger. Ho, 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 okay, hold up, that's actually really nice. I'm going to take you, and then on top of this, Germans, that means mountains and also forest, we're going to have some bonuses. Go over to our military high command, and we actually have a commando expert, which is going to increase special forces cap by six, which that is awesome, because we are going to need that in order to be able to create more troops here. In fact, actually, wait, can I create? Mm, I can create multiple divisions of this. Okay, okay, here's what we're going to need to do. Three divisions worth of mountaineers. I think that that's a great idea. And with that, special forces. Okay, we're going to need that, and as soon as I get political power, we're probably going to need to start justifying on Peru, which actually, no, wait, I, I don't have the divisions here set for. Actually, no, I could justify. I'll have the divisions ready by that time. In fact, to that end, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this cavalry unit that I have and delete you because that's not going to be useful. And instead, I'm going to get the manpower back that I can use for everything else. Peru, it's going to happen, buddy. I need you. We're getting that confederation back one way or another. All right, there's justification, but I can't quite use it yet because I still got to train up my forces at least a little bit to get them to max preparedness. I did completely forget to start training my mountaineers, so that's that's on me. But you know what? We'll, we'll be fine. We'll be able to get this eventually. Because what we're going to need to do is start getting our superior firepower going since we need to increase the ability of our soldiers as much as we possibly can. Integrated support, regimental combat teams, all the basic stuff to be able to help with our very limited amount of manpower that we have. And with that, my friends, let's go ahead and begin. Libya to clear war on Peru, and let's get started here. Okay, what can we do? I got some air wings. Can I potentially defend myself? We'll have to try. I have nothing in the way of air force this is going to be a pure slog along the ground. The question is, can we actually break through? Oh, they're they're actually launching attacks on us. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's see if they they, they launch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all, please, please do attack me. I would love and appreciate it if you continue to do so. All right, there go the Mountaineers. Come on, come on, please pursue. Hold them. Don't let these soldiers move out. There we go. Come on, hold them, hold them, hold them. There we go. Perfect. All right, stop the attacks. Stop the attacks. We've surrounded them. Infantry equipment three. Beautiful. That's exactly what I want. Thank you. You. Okay, we are actually making insanely good progress. I mean, yes, I lost 8,000 people, which is, of course sucks, but taking out 90,000, that is excellent. Come on, Mountaineer buddies. We're going to sacrifice all of your lives, but we're going to do it, damn it. Okay, there we go. Come on, come on. You got this. Just let the Mountaineers move in, please, please, please. I know you're going to survive. Yes, so much death. Oh my God, 21,000. I literally, I don't have the people for this. I don't, but I can't let them retreat. I can't let them retreat. If they escape out of this, since it's a port, that means that they will be able to survive and come after me. Let's see, just push on through. We got rocket artillery. Excellent. We're going to need that. And that should in turn hopefully strengthen my soldiers more, even though now I'm actually missing on infantry equipment. Great. You idiots just keep on attacking me. Yeah, you just please, please, please keep on doing that. I, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. The more that you try to attack me, that just means the more easily that I will be able to break through all around here. So thanks. There we go. Just hold them out. And beautiful. That's three more trapped. Thanks. Thank you. This is just... Why am I having such an easy time as freaking Bolivia? Wait, are you abandoning the front line? I know I've killed off so many of your forces, but why? Why are you leaving these gaps completely open? Don't get me wrong, I, I will take it, thank you. In fact, if anything, I, I should probably try to trap your forces here while it is that I can. Oh my god, I'm out of con- Oh, I have no convoys! Okay, alright, that's that's gonna be a bit of a problem. I, I realize that why I suddenly have literally no supply. None of this is connected by rail, is it? Nope, no it's not. 50 why are all of you gathered up in a single spot? What is the AI doing? No, 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 no. See, I know, I, I know you have all your forces concentrated here. This is literally 15 
15 divisions worth. I don't know why you would do this, but you're not just gonna waltz in here like absolutely nothing is wrong. Wait, what, they fell that quickly? Really? This is like the easiest time I've ever had with Peru using Mountaineers, what the hell? Well, don't mind if I do, because with that, we've taken all of Peru, and that means the Peru-Bolivian Confederation is reborn. Look at that sweet, sweet flag. For the first time since the War of the Confederation, where the United States of Peru-Bolivia collapsed and thought to never exist again, it is back. Some claim that this is just a facade to hide tr the true ruler's imperialist ambition, but many are hopeful that the Confederation will be able... Well, why are there spelling errors in this? You're missing an E, Paradox. Be able to unite the people in a way that they've never been before. What is certain, however, is that the Union is here to stay. That has given me a ludicrous amount of manpower that I'm actually going to be able to use. Along with that, I actually got a decent economy out of it. Like, yeah, the big thing with Peru is that it got more tungsten and oil, but I, I still don't have any steel, which is going to be a little bit of a problem for me, I think. But hey, it's a success. That means do we have the options here now of, wait, hold on. I don't have the ability to get these territories. Hold up, wait, 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 wait. The era of national regression is still a thing, okay. But to remove this, I no longer get core opportunities on this territory. Oh no, it just is a core. Okay, well, then never mind. We're good. That means I can start going after Chile, which has one of my core territories. There's my justification done, and with that, we should be able to move on here in just a moment. Peru, Chile, yoink. Oh my god, is that the only the only resistance that you're going to offer? This is about to be a slaughter. Let's just go ahead and make a beeline down here. There we go, push through, push through, push through. Oh my god, this is so freaking easy. And with that, Chile falls. Oh my lord, that is, that is actually so incredibly quick. Okay, wait, 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 wait. we don't want to take all this though, right? We just want to take our cores. Now, actually, I'll do this the easier way. We're just going to go ahead and take everything, because that really doesn't matter at this point. And then afterwards, occupy territories. We'll release this, but we are going to retain the states with our cores. Nice. Next up on here, Chaco. And Paraguay, Paragon. Except the only Paragon that you are is a martyr. <laughs> there goes the United States joining the Allies, but we are going to push right across and completely ignore everything else. Brazil declare war on Japan. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. If Brazil has joined, that means when I do this, I'm going to be at war with the Allies too. Shit. At least the Chaco is uh, back under its rightful control then. But I'm still missing Acker. Well, nothing we can do then. We just got to go for it. Because at least at long last, we can finally drill for oil in the Chaco. History made right. There's the justification. In our case, uh, we don't have all these troops ready. But you know what? I think that we'll be able to overwhelm them once we have some good numbers. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This is a horrible mistake. But all right, let's go for it. Because guess what? We have Acker, which means we don't even get an event. We just lose the focus or national spirit, then that's it. Now I'm stuck in a war against Brazil. Great, thanks, I love it. I absolutely love it. Extensive conscription, immediately. So come on, let's just let's just keep going. Let's just keep pushing. Am I sacrificing my whole population again? Yes, yes I am. Oh my God, okay, so they're, they're pushing slightly into us and I'm not gonna be able to hold. We're gonna need to stop, stop, just draw them into the forest, okay? Keep as many of their units occupied over here and don't worry, it will blow over. Everything is fine. Fall of Moscow, oh hey. Hey, they're actually do wait a minute when did you launch an invasion here of england <laughs> i distracted so many british forces that the germans were able to launch an invasion and yet simultaneously they're not doing anything okay no no they're they're fighting they just they're very limited hold my brothers distract them as much as we possibly can take all of their forces over this way oh my god i might actually get my troops surrounded here okay all right that's that's not good please please don't, don't do this to me. Nationalist, hey, the fall of London. Okay, please, please keep it up. I'm begging you. The United Kingdom capitulates. Yes. Okay, but that still doesn't actually help me down here. Yeah, okay. With, um, even, even, even with everything saved on that side, I'm still not able to counteract. All I can do is hold back my forces and try, try to survive here. And it's not, it's not working out, man. The United States is just, it has too many forces down here. I can't, I can't actually compete with them. Just like my name here, I am, I am very janked. Because, you know, my friends, technically speaking, if I wanted to, from the very beginning of this, when I had started my plan out, I could have gone 
after Brazil first. I could have. I genuinely could have. The problem is, is that from the very beginning, you literally do not have the manpower to be able to take out a force like Brazil. That would be years and years and years with the slogging, no resources, no manpower, no nothing, just to try and take them out. The only thing you could really do after that is try to build a spy network, but even then, you have so few civilian factories, you won't actually be able to build up a significant network on them. So with that, I think that honestly we are done here today. Yeah, Bolivia is definitely one of those nations that in the latest DLC gets absolutely screwed because it gets all of the negative effects that comes with, you know, having just a generic focus tree combined with bad national spirits and yet no actual real way to fix them. I mean, yes, you'd kind of get a way to fix them, but you can't do anything through a focus tree to try to work your way around it. It's it's very frustrating. But my friends, this has been Sakuyi with another Hearts of Iron 4 playthrough. Thank you all very much for watching. Ah, uh, this ends in defeat, which is so sad, but make sure to check out my community post in which I've been posting things about a video that I'll be making with my wife where she is going to be playing something because I, my voice is not going to last as it is. Goodbye, my friends, and thank you all for watching.